Hello, everyone. Welcome to this short webinar from Pluralsight. I'm Bryce Wilson. I'm an author here and have courses on lots of topics like TypeScript, JavaScript, Node, and Angular, which is what I'll be discussing today. I'm going to present you some things you can do to ensure you're architecting your Angular applications following best practices. I've organized them into five keys that I think are relatively straightforward to implement and will definitely help you get a new project started on a solid foundation. I think it's easy to get a little confused and overwhelmed when starting a new client-side web project. There are lots of frameworks to choose from, and even after choosing a framework, there are lots of choices to make about how to organize and write code within the framework. This is one area where I think Angular is particularly helpful. You may occasionally hear people refer to Angular as an opinionated framework. What they mean by that is that there's usually a well-defined and prescriptive approach to most common application development scenarios. You may or may not prefer a framework that takes this approach, but I think it certainly makes it easier to create a solid application that's easier to maintain when you don't have to make lots of small decisions and worry that the wrong decision might derail your project down the road. Angular doesn't require you to do any of the things I'm going to mention, but it does make it easy for you to do them if you choose to. The first key is to organize your code by application feature. Keeping all of the files related to a feature in one folder is helpful and makes maintaining the code easier when you don't have to look all over a large project trying to find the files you need to modify. Apart from how your files are structured in the project, this also means organizing your code into Angular feature modules. Creating a single module for each large feature in your application has several nice benefits. First, using feature modules encourages the type of file organization I just mentioned so all of your files and folders stay nice and tidy. Also, when working on large applications, you can trust that everything you need related to a particular feature is in a single module and that importing that module will give you access to everything you need. Finally, feature modules may be lazy loaded, which means they won't be downloaded from the server until they're actually needed, which can greatly improve the efficiency of your app. The second key suggestion I have for you is related to the first, and that's to create shared modules. They're created and structured just like feature modules, but they're not related to a single feature. In just about every medium to large sized application, you're going to accumulate a handful of components, directives, and pipes that aren't really feature specific and that need to be used throughout your app. Shared modules are a great way to make all of that application-wide functionality available in one module you can easily import when needed. This is also another nice way to keep your code neatly organized and packaged into easily importable chunks. It's a convention and recommendation from the Angular team that this module be named Shared Module to quickly convey its purpose when developers are browsing the code. The third key suggestion I have is to use shared libraries when you think other applications in your company might benefit from some of the code you're writing. Feature modules and shared modules are meant to be used within a single application, but shared libraries are packaged up independent of any one application. They're packaged up as NPM packages and can be published either to the public NPM repository for anyone on the internet to use or to a private repository just for other developers at your company. Installing a shared library is just like installing any other NPM package. You can just run NPM install followed by the package name and it will be added to your project. Just like shared modules are a way to share functionality across an application, shared libraries are a way to share functionality across multiple applications. Okay, so far, all of these key architectural guidelines I've presented have been very specific and precise. The next one is specific, but should be taken as an overarching guideline that will almost certainly make your Angular apps better and easier to maintain. 
follow the official Angular style guide. It describes in great detail lots of best practices related to just about every aspect of developing apps with Angular. You can find the style guide on the official Angular site at angular.io and can browse the different sections of the guide over in the right margin. It's very well organized, so it's pretty easy to quickly find what you're looking for. However, I do encourage you to get familiar with the entire guide rather than just using it as a reference. Each guideline describes a good or bad practice and is categorized as either something you should always do, something you should consider doing, or something you should avoid. The best part is that each guideline also explains why the guidance is important. All of the key points I've covered so far are in the style guide, as well as lots more that will improve your overall architecture. Okay, the final tip I have for you sort of goes along with adoption of the style guide. You can use the CLI for all sorts of useful things. It will stub out an entirely new application for you, help you create components, modules, and services, run tests, host a dev server, and lots more. From an architectural standpoint, I think the CLI is most useful when you use it to stub out new parts of your application. It saves you a lot of typing, but more importantly, it helps you make sure your code follows the best practices described in the Angular style guide. It's evolved a lot in recent versions of Angular, and there are now lots of options you can pass to the various commands to fine tune its behavior and the code that it generates. All of the commands and all of their options are very well documented on the official Angular website. It's so easy to look up options, I don't even bother trying to memorize them since I can quickly hop over to the website and look them up whenever I need them. So there you have it. These are my five keys for a solid Angular architecture. It's not an exhaustive list of best practices, but I think if you start a new application and implement these suggestions, you're well on your way to building a solid app that should be easy to maintain for many years. That wraps up this brief webinar. I hope you found it helpful and will try to implement some of these ideas. There's a lot more to learn, of course, so I hope you'll check out all of the Angular courses at Pluralsight, including a couple I've created. Thanks for watching and good luck on your next Angular project.